Lake Independence, represented in Parliament for the past five years by seasoned politician Cordell Hyde, is seeing its first female candidate since the constituency was created in 1984. Since its establishment 36 years ago, Lake Eye has developed considerably. Its voting population, however, has seemingly shrunken since 2015 when it boasted over 6,300 registered electors. As of July 2020, the list of eligible voters stood at roughly 4,300. Attempting to unseat Hyde is United Democratic Party candidate Diane Finnegan. I've been offered at a constituency. My husband himself um, stepped down from... I don't want anything that anyone gives to me. I want to work for everything and I want to earn what I have and be able to stand boldly and say, uh, with a team of people who trusted me, believed in me, I accomplished. That achievement for Finnegan, a political newcomer, means pulling off arguably the greatest political upset since Derek Aikman toppled former Prime Minister George Price in Pickstock in 1984. It's a monumental task by any stretch, setting out to dethrone Hyde from what has become a sure seat for the People's United Party. It doesn't matter who runs in what constituency. You could be very wealthy, you could be well known. If the people don't want you, they don't want you. So I, I don't measure where I'm at based on who I'm going up against. My thing is, are the people comfortable where they are at? And if they are, then they'll stay with who they know. But if they want greatness, if they want uh, to uplift themselves, if they want to bring back dignity within their constituency, then they'll give Miss D a try. Three-time era representative Cordell Hyde has respectfully declined participation in our campaign trail coverage. On Thursday morning, the deputy party leader delivered opening remarks at the PUP manifesto launch. This is not about building bridges and buildings. It's about building people. It's about listening to people, hearing their concerns, feeling their pain, their blighted hope, seeing what's left when hope unborn had died. It is about the dirt road and no road, the mud floor, the broken door windows, about sleeping on wet floors and breathing in sick air, about people having crocodiles for neighbors while next door the government builds a $25 million building. It's about prioritizing the people who need our help the most. In some places, those people, his constituents included, have grown weary of that rhetoric. Residents say that for years, this era of Lake Independence has been neglected by both political parties. I lend my support to the one, to the people in a way, to look for support me and do what I need, what I, I need for having you know, my, you know, our lives, brother. We went and vote. And these people have a, a job to do, all right? And that's that what we want to do. We want to give we infrastructure. We did a back for years, years and years. For we cries, go up and loan deaf ears. You know, go to nobody until this lady just come and decide to do what they do. And that's repairing a dirt road that is the only means of access to this dead end. My experience living back here is very... At the same, it's very happy because I'm trying to do my own land. But it's very sad because we're living in a mess. As you can see, we have a lot of garbage all around and it's not a good environment for our kids. I have three kids and it's very difficult. I go to church and every time I go to church, well, when I used to go to church, it's very difficult to them to walk outside on the street, muddy on the street. And I'm very excited that something is happening. You know, you have to, sometimes you have to wait way to election to come that you can see something happen in your area. Hopefully we see more more um, progressive in Belize and especially my era that really needs to be fixed. From the podium at the manifesto launch, their era representatives spoke with passion about the need to empower all Belizeans through land ownership. It's about giving every Belizean a stake in this country, land for the youth, land for women, land for the public officers and teachers, land for everyone who doesn't have a land. It's about land for the landless. November 11th, for both candidates, will be a testing time when the degree of their success or failure 
at campaigning and delivering those messages will be revealed. Reporting for News 5, I am Isana Kayatano.